In the last tutorial, I showed you guys advanced compositing techniques, and I promised you that I would take that composite that we come up with and turn it into a t-shirt design and teach you guys how to do that. And that's what we're doing in this video. I'm going to take it a step further and show you guys how to color separate for screen print. We're going to do like a two to three color separation. So by the end of this video, you should have a pretty good idea of how to color separate pretty much any design you want using the technique that I'm going to show you in this video. If that excited you like it excites me, then please smash that like button and also subscribe if you aren't already. There's only one thing left to do, guys. Open Photoshop. Let's begin. This is where we left off in the last tutorial. The beautiful thing about this spot that we're in is we're about 85% done with the design. All we have to do is worry about typography elements and uh, you know, like the processing effects in order to separate colors for a screen print. And that's what we're gonna be covering today. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So this composition is pretty much what we're gonna be using. I'm not gonna focus on the type so much right now. We're gonna do that kind of more towards the end. I'm gonna focus more on just color separation and then um, I think that's just gonna make it a lot easier for everybody. This group pretty much just hosts all of the layers that makes up this composition that we covered in the last tutorial. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and you know we can honestly just merge this group together and I'm gonna press Command T and right click and flip horizontally. And I'm just going to kind of you know position it where I want it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is press Shift Command Option E and I'm going to create a sort of base layer that I can use for masking too. So let's go ahead and just uh, go down to our adjustments and add a threshold adjustment layer. And this is going to allow me to get a really clean base layer. So as you can see, it already kind of, you know, filled everything with black, which is what I wanted. And then selecting the threshold layer, let's press shift command option E again. And you guys can probably do the math on what that, you know, what those shortcuts are for PC, but, uh, um, let's go ahead and just delete this now. We don't really need it. And obviously we will have to fill in some of these, uh, you know, areas that were not completely filled in. So I'm just going to go to my pencil tool and fill those areas in with black. Now the pencil tool, I like it because it gives you the sharpest edges. Pretty much you just want a solid color all the way through. You don't want any white areas. So just make sure you get all those. So right here is a demonstration of the pencil tool and the brush tool. And you can see the big difference here. The brush is a lot softer and the pencil's sharp, it's tack sharp. And that's the reason why I like using the pencil tool, especially when you're you know, uh, filling in colors because you don't want any of those gradations because when you're doing things like DTG printing, for example, you can't really print less than 100% opacity with DTG printing. So that's where you'd wanna use a pencil tool. And even screen printing, if you're gonna have any gradations, you really want to half tone those out because um, even screen printing cannot handle anything less than 100% opacity. So it's really like opacity can be your worst enemy, honestly, with printing. And that's the reason why I like the pencil tool. But anyway, that's a quick demonstration for you guys. And um, basically right now we just need to cut this out of the background. So I'm just gonna go to my my uh, magic wand. Uh, what am I gonna press? Shift, Command, V to paste that in place. And now we have our base layer, which we can use for things like selections, which is great. So now that's step number one out of the way. And we're going to need a bunch of copies, okay? Because if we're doing three colors, for example, we're going to need a color for black. We're going to need a color for, for the stem and the cherries. So that's three colors right there. And we don't need a white underbase because we have the white background, okay? Let's hide this for now and let's create a new group. And let's just name this processing because this is where we're going to, you know, build our, our effect that we're going to be using, which is like more of a stippled look. And in order to do this, we just need a blank layer. Let's press shift backspace. Fill this with 50% gray, okay? Now you can use either camera raw grain, which I see some designers do, or you could just use noise. I'm gonna use noise for this. I find it, I don't know, I like it just as much, honestly. So let's add noise, and we don't need a ton of noise. Let's do like 55, just copy my exact settings. So monochromatic, Gaussian, and 55% on the amount, and then you can even preview that. Let's press okay. So now we have our grain. Now, what I want to do is right click on the grain layer and convert this to a smart object so I can actually add things like blur without working destructively. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to title this uh, layer grain. There we go. Bam. And let's toggle our other layer back on and let's just change the blend mode of the grain layer to overlay. OK, so I'm going to actually title this. I'm going to put in parentheses overlay so you guys can see that. There you go. And then above this, we want to add a threshold layer. All right, so this is going to be a threshold layer. It's going to look really ugly at first, but I'm going to show you guys how to fix this. Now, the only other thing we need to do is also convert this layer to a smart object layer as well. And let's go up to image, 
adjustments, shadows, and highlights, okay? And we're going to use this layer to bring out details in certain regions in the highlights, midtones, and the shadows, okay? Now, the grain looks really bad, but if we go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, we can actually just blur it as much as we want. Honestly, it's really up to you, but I'm just going to add a slight blur, and this is going to take that grain and just make it a lot nicer to look at, less intense. So this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. So let's add like a, maybe like a 9, 6... Let's go to eight. Eight is kind of like a good middle ground for me. So there you go. Now the grain looks a lot nicer. One thing you'll notice is the highlights are kind of blown out and the shadows are really shadowy, <laughs> for lack of better words. So let's just click on the shadow and highlight adjustment layer that we added. And we can start you know, playing with these different settings to bring out some of those details. That's kind of how we get a nice uh, you know, even tone across the entire design. So those highlights we can bring up a little bit you know everything is kind of like you know less is more of course you don't want to go too crazy like those highlights you still want to you know keep them there mess with the colors the midtones are really really important let's go ahead and check the leaves and the leaves you might even have to do separate which is what I ended up doing because you know we're losing a lot of detail on them but uh, this layer is a smart object so this shadow and highlight adjustment is going to stack as a smart filter so we can always go back and change it if we don't like anything so Another thing we could do is we can create a layer above our design here and just change the blend mode to overlay and make sure your flow is like something like 30 to 40%. I would even go less, probably like 25. And you can actually paint some of these shadows in if you want anything to be a little bit more shadowy, if you will. Um, so that's, that's something I do very often um, with my text especially. But yeah, this is like a really cool way to get like some of those uh, shadows back in there without having to like do a bunch of duplicating, you know, with the layers. So yeah, like right here, we have some shadows. We can kind of embellish these shadows right there. Um, pretty much anywhere you see shadows, you can always, you know, paint with black and make them, you know, pop a little bit more. Let's create a new group above the processing layer and just name this colors. And then we're going to actually add some solid colors to this right here. So we're going to need three different colors, of course. So our first color is probably going to be like that reddish color. And we could even change the color to something a little bit more, you know, noticeable for now and then change it later on if we don't like it. But I'm just going to try to get as close to the originals as possible. So this is going to be for the cherry. So what I want to do is actually um, change the blend mode of this layer to most likely multiply. But what's happening right now is we're getting some spillage, right? All the color is going on the background and we don't want that. So what we could do is take that base color that we uh, created, which we actually kind of screwed up already. So what we need to do is turn this on and flip it. I should have done this first to be really honest with you guys, but it happens. So now that I have that new base layer, all I have to do is hold in command, left click, and it will make that selection for me. And then I just basically want to add a layer mask to the color group, and it's going to isolate that color inside of that mask, which is exactly what we want. All that mask is doing is literally hiding what's on the background based on our selection, right? So we can actually paint it back if we wanted to, as you can see, I could just paint with white to add it back, paint with black to delete it, right? But um, you obviously want to use a flow of 100% if you're going to be doing that. I'm going to go to my first group, and we're just going to duplicate this twice, and we can toggle these off for now. So I'm going to name this, let's say, uh, green. And there, that's pretty much it, actually. We only need two colors. So this first color is going to be the pink color, and then this one's going to be that green color. So we can actually click on it now and try to find a green that we like. Somewhere around here is going to be fine. So now I just want to select my layer mask on the pink color and let's invert the mask. So I'm going to press Command I on that to invert it. And let's use our pencil tool with black selected or actually white selected and then just start painting where that pink color should go. And that's pretty much it, guys. It's simple. I'm kind of doing this fast, too. I would spend a lot more time on this, trust me, if I was you, because, um, you know, again, you don't want your prints to turn out like shit, right? All right, I'm going to press X on my keyboard to change my foreground color to white. And if you, you know, look on the left hand side here, you can see what X is doing. It's just switching the foreground and background colors, see? And that's like an easy way to just quickly uh, delete and add with the with the pencil or the brush tool. So I, I do that all the time. It's really, really helpful. All right, let's zoom out and see what we have so far. That looks really good. Now let's go ahead and toggle on the green layer. And obviously it changed the color of the pink. And because we have the blend mode overlay, when you toggle that green on, you can see that it's blending in with that, uh, you know, that pink color to create a darker greenish color, more of like an olive. So, um, you know, it's it's also a really good 
way to visualize where the colors are intersecting. But uh, anyway, let's press Command I to toggle that off. Actually, if we wanted to, we can actually just copy this layer mask over, check this out, and then invert it. And in theory, that should make everything else green, which it did, which is awesome. So that is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I like that. And then we can always just paint away what we don't want to be green. You can be as meticulous as you want. It's your show. I'm going to redo the mask. So I'm actually going to select the base again. And then I'm just going to go up to select, modify, and then contract by, let's say, maybe one pixel. And then add that as a mask. And that should fix the edges that I was seeing peeking out. And that did fix it, which is way better looking. I don't like the way the stem looks right here. It kind of looks a little janky, but um, it's not terrible. Could be a lot worse. Um, the only thing we're missing, honestly, is like a highlight layer, right? So technically, if we want to create a highlight layer, we can honestly just like hide these colors real quick. And then on the processing group, what we could do is just duplicate the threshold so we don't lose, you know, that first threshold because that one was like kind of perfect, right? We we had all of the 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 tonality set properly. So I don't I would hate to lose that process, right? So if I were to like mess it up, for example, I don't know where I was at before. I would have to like take a educated guess or write down the threshold level number, which is too much work. So duplicating it just gives us a copy of it. So this could be like threshold main and then this can be threshold highlight, whatever, you know, there you go. So now I have access to that highlight. If I want it, we can actually, you know, hide this layer nine, which is like, you know, we use that to add shadows to like the leaves and stuff. We don't really need that on right now. So I'm just going to go to the highlight layer and just focus on getting a really clean highlight. And we can honestly even change the grain layer a little bit. So I can add a little bit more blur to it to really get those highlights, you know, popping because they're really small dots, right? So you might need to make the highlights a little bit more. I don't know how to say it. Like you might need to thicken the highlights up. So the grain isn't so fine, if that makes sense. But uh, let's press OK. And this looks like a better highlight layer to me. So let's go ahead and press Shift Command Option E to duplicate everything. But let's go ahead and get these uh, highlights isolated. So I'm going to select the outside first and the inside right here. Delete. So now we should be left with just the black. And actually what I'm going to do is create a layer here. So you guys can see what I'm doing. So now we just want to select the white. So I'm going to turn off contiguous and then just select the black and delete. And now we are left with the highlight. So that's pretty much what it looks like with that background color fill. All right, now I have my highlight layer just like that. So you guys kind of seen how I use the magic wand tool to select everything. Now that we have our highlights and our colors, what I want to do is actually hide those for now. And I'm going to select the processing layer and then press shift command option E again. And we're actually going to hide everything because we won't need that in a second. So this is going to turn into our new black layer right here so this is our black color that we're going to print above everything um and then let's just you know select all the white and delete it so now technically all we have to do is put that above everything just like so and then we could turn on color and highlights now we're ready to screen print so since our black layer is separated and isolated what we could do is toggle each layer off individually and print one on each screen so you can burn this one on a screen first which is a pink color and then we can burn the green on another screen and then we can burn the black on another screen. All of our colors are separated on their own respective layers and you can burn them into a screen now. But the problem is our highlight layer is kind of a waste of money. If we were to print this design on a white t-shirt, for example, any white fabric, we really don't need that highlight layer. It's just white. And really, if you're printing on a white shirt, that should become the highlight layer. OK, so how do we fix that? This is one way I think we could do it. We could take the black layer drag it into the color group. And now all we have to do is make a selection of the highlight layer. So I'm going to press command, select the thumbnail. Now we can go to our color group and select the layer mask and just press shift backspace and fill that with black. And you can see that it knocks out the highlights. Check that out. So when we go to print this, the white t-shirt becomes a highlight layer. I just imported one of my mockups to show you guys what's happening. So you can actually see the fabric peeking through the highlights now on the teeth as well. And that's pretty much what's going to happen when you go to print this. Another important thing to note, though, is that we don't actually need to put a blend mode on our colors anymore because everything is isolated with a layer mask. So we're good to go there. We don't need any of that. Let's delete this. 
And now our design is pretty much ready to print, guys, just like that. If this video gets enough likes and comments, I'll make another tutorial showing you guys how I do my text effects. This is one technique to color separate. You can also do halftone separations. I like this method a little bit more, and I find it's a little more straightforward than doing halftone color separations, but there's a lot to learn, you know, and that's why we have this channel, so we can all come together as a community and learn together. If you guys are into that sort of thing, make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment, guys. It really does help. And if you guys want badass design resources and you want to support my channel, head over to charliepangas.com. I just dropped a new product. You guys definitely don't want to miss it. I'll see you in the next one.